everyone, it's Alice and today I want to tell you all about the very best fiction books that I read in 2020. I read a lot of fantastic books in the past year and as usual I'm splitting my favorites into fiction and non-fiction. So this will obviously be all of the fiction books and my non-fiction picks will be up very soon. These also come to you in no particular order, I just have a stack here and I'm just gonna go through them. First, we have got a book that I have talked a lot about since I read it, and it is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is a contemporary fiction novel set in an immaculate suburb in Cleveland where the Richardsons decide to let their rental home to a single mother and her daughter. And as this story goes on, their lives become more and more entangled and resentments and secrets start emerging. You know when you just start reading a book and you're just a few pages in and you're like, okay, wow, this is it. <laughs> that is exactly how I felt about this book. I was immediately sucked into it and I was just like loving it. The book is very much focused on its characters. They're very complicated and complex and extremely interesting to read about. And I especially loved reading about the mothers in here and seeing them handle things very differently. I thought that was just so interesting and I think about it a lot still. It's kind of a slow burn of a book but it has an amazing setting, fantastic characters, and it's just very very compelling. The second book is actually kind of similar to Little Fires Everywhere in some ways and I think that if you like one you would also like the other and it is Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane. This is also a contemporary fiction novel and it's about these two NYPD cops who move to the suburbs and become neighbors. And the story is all about the relationship between these two families, what happens behind closed doors in both homes, the lifelong friendship between their children, and this horrible incident that breaks all of them apart. This book is all about family, forgiveness, mental illness, addiction, trauma, love, and just so much more. It has absolutely amazing characters and I loved following them throughout all of the years that this book covers. And I think that it's kind of a quiet book in a lot of ways, but it's still very emotional and impactful. Next, we have got The Lovely, A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende. This is a historical fiction novel that starts off in the late 1930s as civil war grips Spain. And we meet this young woman and her brother-in-law, and they have to flee the country along with hundreds of thousands of others. And we follow them on their lifelong journey that eventually takes them all the way to Chile. This was also one of those books where I was just like a chapter in and I was hooked. I love the historical aspects of this book. I think the different settings are captured brilliantly. I love the way that the characters are crafted and I was just overall very impressed with the writing in this. And it's one of the best historical fiction books that I have ever read. Then we've got a book that I've seen on a lot of people's like favorite books of the year lists and for good reason and it is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a literary historical fiction novel about these two identical twins who grew up in this small southern black community and end up running away at the age of 16 and they end up sort of living very different lives. One ends up meeting a man and having a very dark-skinned child and the other ends up in California living in this affluent neighborhood passing for white. There are a lot of things going on in this book and there are a lot of themes but somehow the author manages to take all of it and bring it together and somehow not make it feel overwhelming which is quite impressive. It's fascinating and readable and it treats its themes and its characters with great care and it was just fascinating to see the story from all of these different perspectives and it's a very difficult book to summarize but it's an amazing novel about family, race, belonging, and identity. Then we have got a classic and it is They Were Sisters by Dorothy Whipple. This novel is set in England, mainly in the years between the two world wars, and in it we meet three sisters and follow their fates as they marry three very different men. Dorothy Whipple is one of my favorite authors and this is probably my favorite novel by her. I love how this book explores the relationship between these three sisters and we get to see them grow up and we get to see their lives shift and change throughout the years and throughout their marriages. 
I just love the way Dorothy Whipple writes characters and I just thought this story was fascinating and there's just something about her writing that I just love and even though this is kind of a chunky book I never wanted it to end. Up next we have got A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. This is a literary fiction novel and in this novel we meet a man named Maurice and all Maurice wants is to be a successful author and he will stop at nothing, nothing to reach his goal. He's not very good at coming up with his own stories though, so when he meets this older distinguished author in Berlin, this author takes him under his wing and Maurice uses him in the worst possible way to launch this career that he is so desperate for. This is a book that has really just stuck with me. I still think about this all the time. The main character in here is the most horrible and most unlikable character that I have ever read about, but I just loved reading about him. It was a fascinating and infuriating book all at once in the best possible way, and I just loved every bit of it. I do think that if you <laughs> struggle with unlikable characters though, this is not for you. Second to last, I read and loved Call Me By Your Name by Andrea Asiman. This is a romance novel and it's set in the Italian Riviera where a sudden and intense romance blossoms between this young man and this guy who is a house guest staying with the family over the summer. You all probably know that I'm not like a big one for romance, but this one got even me. It was amazing. It's intimate and intense and painful and beautiful all at once. And it's as much of a coming of age story as it is a romance. And I just loved the way that the author captured all of these complicated feelings of our main characters. And I think the writing is just absolutely astounding. At the very end, we have got The Last Town by Isabel Greenberg. This is a graphic novel and in it we meet the four Bronte siblings and we get to explore the world that they created when they were children. This is my first novel by Greenberg and I adored this. I love how imaginative this is and I loved getting to know the characters and I like that this has like a slightly melancholy feel to it but it's also really fun. I also love the artwork and I love the color palette and I just felt like this was such a treat to read. Okay everyone, those were all of the very very best fiction books that I read last year and I would of course love to know what your favorites were. As usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description and I will see you soon. Bye!